In this video, we're going to teach you how to configure a PLX31 Ethernet IP Modbus 4. So we're going to go ahead and right click on the module, filter it by PLX30, and choose the PLX31 EIP MBS4. Now we're going to go ahead and expand the tree and right click on the Ethernet configuration. Go down to configure and here we're going to change the IP address of the module that we're going to download to. So I'm just going to change this to 10.1.2.250 and I'm going to also change the gateway to 10.1.2.1. And we'll just click OK and we'll go up to the module name, right click on it and we'll go to download from PC to device. Now once this is done we're going to select browse devices and this will launch our ProSoft Discovery service. Um, here we can right click on the module and go ahead and configure the IP address to the actual module so we can download via Ethernet. And I'll just change it to 10.1.250 as well. And once we're done here we just click OK and close that out. Now we'll go ahead and download to the destination address which is 10.1.250 which is the Ethernet IP Modbus 4. Now we're going to bring in the EDS file using RS Links Classic. So I open up RS Links Classic and I click Connections, RS Who, open up Ethernet IP, and choose our device, which is going to be 10.1.2.250. Now once we see our device, we'll right click on it and choose Upload EDS from Module. Now we'll open up the EDS wizard. The first step, it's going to test the EDS and it's going to show up that the tests were successful. There's no errors. It's going to show the graphic of our module. And the last step, it's actually going to register the EDS file. And now this is all done. Now we can just click Finish, and our EDS is now uploaded. And now you will notice that the image of our gateway shows up in RS Who in RS Links Classic. Okay, now we'll go over the EIP Class 1 connections. A uh, number of connections may vary depending upon your module. Um, they also have a 248 word input size and 248 word output size and they increment by 250 words at a time starting at input at 0 and output at 2000 and just increment for values of 250 there. I'm going to go ahead and leave all these as is. Now we're going to configure an I.O. connection to a Control Logics processor version 20 or newer. So we're going to go ahead and choose Vision 20, and we're going to give it the name of ProSoft Training. I have a 7-slot chassis. So we'll select OK, and we'll go down to the 1756 backplane. Select New Module, and we're going to filter it by type, and we're going to choose Communication, and we're going to drill down to the 1756 E and BT. Select this module and click Create. I'm going to name it ENBT and give it the IP address of 10.1.2.110 and we'll go ahead and leave that in slot 1. Select OK and close this dialog box. Now we'll right click on the Ethernet backplane, select new module and this is where we're going to choose the add-on profile from ProSoft. This is where we'll choose the EDS add-on profile that we uploaded in step one and it'll be filtered by vendors. So just go ahead and choose ProSoft Technology and select the PLX31 Ethernet IP module. Now we'll give it the name PLX30 and we'll give it the IP address of the PLX module which is 10.1.2.250. Now here's where we're going to add I.O. connections. So here we can add multiple connections. Your connections may vary depending upon your module. And we'll select OK and we'll choose Yes to accept and click OK. Now this is where it brings in all the input and output for each one of your connections. And that's really about it for adding I.O. connections to a version 20 processor or newer. We'll right click on uh, Modbus Port 1 and click Configure. 
First option is enabled. We're going to choose yes. And here's the RS interface. Uh, we're going to choose RS-485 for this application. The type is going to be a master. And protocol is going to be RTU. Uh, baud rate, we're going to be 9600. Parity, none. Data bits, 8. Stop bits is going to be 1. Um, response timeout, we can leave that at 1000. That seems appropriate. Retry count, we'll just knock this down to 0. If we're going to be missing a command, there's no sense in retrying it. It'll just grab it again on the next queue. Here's some uh, delays if you need to add them. And now we'll just click OK. Next we'll go in and configure the port 1 commands. And this is where we're going to actually build a command for this port 1. So we'll click add a row and then edit that row. First one is going to be um, continuous because we want this command to just continue to pull. Um, internal database, we're going to choose 3000. Um, we'll leave the poll interval at 0. Register count, we're going to go ahead and grab 20 words. Swap code, we'll just leave this at no change. Node address will be 4. And here's all the function codes. And we're just going to choose function code 3. And the Modbus address and device, this is going to be the address in the device that we're looking at. And that address is 201. We're just going to click OK, and this will complete adding a command to Modbus port 1. Now we're going to go over using the data map. So we'll select common map, and go to data map, and right click and click configure, add a row, and then edit that row. Now the data map is where you can move data back and forth in the internal database. Now we're going to move in some status data from the Modbus master serial port. So here's where we're going to map in some status data for each one of the ports. Now we're going to map in data, status data for port 1. And we're going to move that to address 3900 of our internal database. And the rest of that is how many registers we want to move, um, if we need to swap to correct any data, and the interval to move that data around. And this concludes the configuration overview of the PLX31 Gateway module. For any more information on this product or any of our other products, please visit us at our website at www.prosoft-technology.com. And as always, happy training!